It's a strange and extraordinary tale of two sisters who disappeared from their home in Minnesota one evening as their parents were caught up in a hostile divorce. The mother and the girls claiming abuse, but the courts unconvinced. Where did these sisters go? Did their mother have a hand in the disappearance? ABC's Elizabeth Vargas has this twisting tale. It is 7 p.m. on a 30-degree April evening in the suburbs of Minneapolis. And while most families are settling in for dinner, one family is about to fracture forever when two children living at this home vanish. No shoes, no coats, no backpacks, nothing. Poof, they're gone. 13-year-old Gianna and 14-year-old Samantha Rucky disappear the only trace, footprints in the snow. Their parents are embroiled in an ugly divorce and custody dispute, but they insist they are united in their desperation for the girls. Where did they go? Who are they with? And why does our journey begin by asking questions to their mother inside the Ramsey County Jail? Did you have anything to do with your two daughters running away? No. Do you sit here and think, how did this happen? Clean record, never had Clean a problem. Clean record, and here you are in jail on a million dollars bail? What's going on? I have no idea. This shouldn't be what happens in a divorce. This divorce is more like guerrilla warfare than a legal proceeding, but for every documented grievance in this harrowing tale, there is documentation, too, of the good times. Look at this! 20 years worth of home movies featuring both the Ruckies in starring roles as an affectionate, feisty couple. You're, so, you're figuring it out now? And doting, loving parents to their five children. It's my birthday! Nico, Samantha, Gianna, okay. Nia, and Gino. It sounds like a busy home. They are wonderful. It was my dream. She says despite those smiling faces, there was a shocking, ugly secret in the family years of emotional and physical abuse by David. What would he do? Throw things, hammers at me. If he got mad, um, there was black eyes, there was broken ribs. We had to lock ourselves in the bedroom because we scared. We just didn't know how his behavior was gonna be from one day to the next. And she claims David didn't just target her, but went after the children too. How often did that happen? Once is more than enough. It happened a lot. After 20 years of marriage, Sandra says she reaches her breaking point and finally files for divorce. She says, frightened for her life, she also gets an order of protection against David. And then she calls police on him at least 20 times, claiming he continuously violates it. He broke into the house, came running up the stairs, jumped onto the bed that I was at, started choking me, and then took a pillow and started suffocating me. The children, now ages 8 to 14, remain in Sandra's custody and refuse to even see David, rebuffing all of his attempts to connect. It's your dad. Call me. I would like you to call me back. Call me. The family court judge, David Knutson, appoints an advocate for the children and several therapists trying to facilitate a relationship with their father. The children say they don't want one. Gianna and Samantha make audio recordings to support what their mother says. This is Gianna Rucky's voice. Being in the same house as my dad, things were really bad. He was abusive. He had anger issues. He'd always be screaming and yelling. But in a surprising twist, the judge determines that there has been no evidence of abuse. And based on the findings from a psychologist he appointed, that it is Sandra who is the real problem here. That the children are showing signs of parental alienation syndrome, meaning the reason the children are adamantly opposed to seeing David is not because he's abused them or their mother, but because Sandra has brainwashed them. I've never done anything but be there for my children. My kids are my life. This is where the judge takes a drastic and, for Sandra, devastating step. He orders Sandra out of the house and all five of her children removed from her custody. David's sister Tammy becomes the children's temporary guardian. She moves into the Rucky home to take care of them. But the two oldest Rucky girls, Samantha and Gianna, are having none of it. And on that day, the sisters disappear without a trace. What was your reaction? What any mother's reaction would be. I'm concerned, I'm worried, everything was going through my mind. When Sandra's ex-husband David finds out his daughters have disappeared, he is terrified. What was your biggest fear? I mean, these are young girls, you don't want them hitchhiking, we live by a truck stop, we don't, you think of all these terrible scenarios. 
Have you ever raised a hand against Sandra or your children? Have no. you ever struck them? No. Have you ever physically abused them in no. any way? No. David begins to suspect that Sandra knows more than she's saying about their missing daughters. Did you think she might have something to do with this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One month after the girl's disappearance, there is a bizarre twist in the story. They show up, but in a place no one expects. The Rocky girls say they want to be heard on local television. They met with us at a hotel. We don't know who brought them here. The local Fox 9 station airs this story. And right there, sitting in front of the reporter, are the two missing Rocky sisters. I'm just really scared it's going to end really badly. Glad to see my girls. But, you know, what I was hearing coming out of their mouths was hard. And as quickly as you can change the channel, the girls are gone again vanishing back into the night. The search continues for the Rucky girls. Their parents' epic divorce drags on until the judge finally makes his ruling. In a painstaking 60-page order, he drops a bombshell, awarding full custody of all five children to David, writing of Sandra's allegations of abuse that the court has not received any evidence to support her very serious allegations. For David, it is total vindication. But Sandra's legal troubles were only about to begin. The search for the two missing girls shifts to one of Sandra's staunchest supporters, Dee Dee Evavold, an activist who is vocal about what she says is corruption in family courts. Detectives search her home and find a cell phone photo of one of the girls on a farm. They trace that photo back to White Horse Ranch. Gina and Doug Dolan own the ranch, which offers 90-minute therapy sessions with their animals. Our mission is to reach children and families um, and to bring healing and wholeness through the animals. The Dolans say it was Sandra, along with Dee Dee, who dropped the girls off at the ranch one night with no more than the clothes on their back. Then Sandra left and never returned. Days turned into months and then astonishingly, years. Was it a secret that the girls were here? No. No, it was not. Everybody knew they were here. But it all came to an end last November when authorities arrived at Doug's front door, simply following the trail from Dee Dee Evavold's cell phone, not realizing the girls are actually there. When David finally sees the girls for the first time, it is not the reunion he imagined. Were you nervous? I ran out of the room. I started crying. I didn't recognize them because, you know, you, you know your children. You, you remember what they sound like. You remember how they looked. I didn't recognize my daughters. Sandra, are you making any comment today? Sandra is now out of jail. She was released in February after 130 days behind bars. You do appreciate the air and the sun. I will say that. But she says there was no cause for celebration. I'm in a prison without the bars. Um, is what I'm in now. Because as part of her release, Sandra is not permitted to have any contact with Samantha and Gianna. She is allowed to see her other children with conditions. As for the girls, David says they are happy to be home and doing well. And it might surprise you to hear how David sees his family's future. Will you fight her ability to see the children? This is my children's mother. It's important that they have a mother. For Nightline, I'm Elizabeth Vargas in New York.